based on sort of how loud the applause are, how many people want to see me build an AI application in under 20 minutes? Yeah? All right, good. I, uh, I created as few slides as possible, um, but I did create, I did create a couple. Uh, so my name is Carter Robasa, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving the developer relations team here at Datastax. And woo! And I, uh, I consider myself to be a Gen AI nerd, um, but it's funny, you know, uh, you know, Chet asked Harrison, like, you know, you've been doing this a long time, and he was super, like, taken aback. He's like, what are you talking about, man? This stuff's brand new. Uh, and that's how I feel about it. You know, I've been building full stack web applications for, you know, a long time, like, let's say maybe 20 years. Uh, and I didn't write one line of AI code until about six to seven months ago when I joined Datastax. And prior to that, you know, ChatGPT had been out for a while and OpenAI had been out for a while, but it hadn't really permeated my community or where I lived. And I just kind of felt like, you know what, that is the domain of machine learning engineers, data scientists, super brainy people. It's not something that someone like me can do. Uh, and I'm hoping in the next uh, 19 minutes uh, that, you all, uh, that you all feel differently. And I, I want to show you what's possible, uh, and I'm gonna use Netflix as an example. Uh, so, uh, so Netflix, it is, a, it is one of the most popular pieces of software in the world. It's used by hundreds of millions of people. It is by every definition an, a piece of A plus software. The Netflix engineering team is considered one of the finest engineering teams in the world. They have no trouble hiring, um, they're amazing. I want you to imagine that after tonight, this amazing event, um, maybe some of you are going to the a uh, AI Engineers World Fair coming up this week. Uh, so you've had a busy week and you go back to wherever you live on Friday, uh, you curl up on the couch and you wanna watch a movie by yourself or perhaps with a loved one. And you know exactly what you wanna watch. You know, you wanna watch a movie with uh, a strong uh, female lead. And oh shucks, that is not what you wanted. Uh, and look, some of you in the audience are probably saying like, that's completely unfair, just you know, get rid of some of the words, use keywords, whatever. Um, sure, I mean, that would be fine uh, if we lived in a world uh, that didn't have chat GPT, right? I mean, <laughs> Harrison and Brian just told you, like, and by the way, they're not alone, right? Hundreds of millions of people also use chat GPT. Um, chat GPT has changed how people think software is supposed to work. Uh, and that is why, you know, products like Netflix have to evolve. So then the question is, okay, fine, um, what does that have to do with me, right? You know, if you're a web developer, if you're building a startup, if you're building an application, uh, you know, great, Carter's telling me that I have to build intelligent software, like what, you know, how, right? How am I supposed to do this? And uh, luckily, you know, we have uh, a fantastic technique called RAG. Um, but, you know, retrieval augmented generation is a technique that makes this kind of intelligence available to all kinds of developers, um, no matter their skill level. And I want to prove this to you by taking something like this. So this is a website called uh, themoviedb.org. Uh, think of it as IMDB, but not owned by Amazon. And we're gonna take information from this website and we're gonna build a smarter Netflix. Uh, and we're gonna do it right here, uh, live in front of you. So here's Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is a Python script. I'm gonna go ahead and just start running it. And we're gonna talk about what it is doing. Uh, so you can see this script running. Uh, and you can see movies starting to get ingested. So what have, what have I done? Um, well, there are two things I'll call out. One, I'm uh, importing the data API client uh, for AstraDB. So AstraDB is uh, Datastax's vector and NoSQL database. So I'm getting a, a client that I can use to store information, and I'm also using Unstructured. So Unstructured has a, uh, a cap capability of uh, scraping websites and uh, helping to take that unstructured data and make it meaningful. So I wanna walk through this very quickly line by line. I have a JSON file that has all the movies that I care about preloaded. I'm going to go ahead and create a client to my database. I'm gonna specify a specific collection called movies. And we're gonna iterate through all of those movies. For every one, we're gonna use unstructured to fetch that web page. And this is pretty brilliant, unstructured understands the parts of the web page that are maybe garbage, um, but it also understands what parts are considered to be narrative text. So that's what I want, right? I want everything on the web page that Unstructured considers to be part of the narrative for that web page. Once I have that content, I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to issue an upsert 
to my database, right? So if the, if, if, the docu if the document with that ID isn't there, great, create it. If it is there, update it. Uh, and I'm gonna pass along both structured data, like title and the path to the poster image, and this unstructured data. So let's, uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the script. Sorry, in theory, there we go. So let's go ahead and switch over to the database to see what this looks like. So this is AstroDB, uh, let me make it a little bigger. Great, and all of my databases are listed on the left. Uh, I have, uh, every database has one or more collections, so I've got a collection called movies, and here is all of the data that I've pulled into my database using unstructured. And you, here you can see the structured data, like title, poster path, and this unstructured data. But there's another thing uh, that's kind of interesting, I think so, uh, there's a vector column. You might be asking yourself, how did that happen? Because if you go back to the Python code, uh, I am not importing OpenAI, I'm not doing anything here to compute that vector embedding, so how did it get into my database? It got into my database because uh, Datastax has shipped a feature called Vectorize. So when I created this collection, I was able to configure a specific uh, embedding provider, in this case OpenAI, but we have launched support for many more of them, and I'm also able to specify a specific embedding model. In this case, text embedding three large. So every time I insert or update into my collection, it is automatically computing uh, a vector for that information and storing it in this vector column. So awesome. So we have, uh, we've completed 50% uh, of the RAG journey. We've ingested the data into the database. But now we want to build an application because I promised you I was going to write code and we're going to build something. So how do we do that? Well, uh, Ed earlier uh, mentioned that we launched Langflow 1.0. So I want to show you all what Langflow looks like. So this is completely open source. It's running on my laptop. It is going to spawn an editor that you can use to build AI applications. I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, a little bigger. And I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to create a new project. Uh, you, can ha you can start with a blank slate, or you can uh, use a template. I'm going to use a template for the sake of time. Uh, if I zoom out, don't worry about being able to read anything. Uh, the components on the bottom represent the, uh, an ingestion phase. I'm gonna ignore that because we've already ingested the data, now we wanna build the app, right? So let me go ahead and zoom in, and I'm gonna talk through every single one of these components. One thing I wanna mention immediately is that as beautiful as this UI might look, uh, behind the scenes, it is, it is for developers, and behind the scenes, it is all code. It is all Python code. You have the full power of the Python ecosystem. You can edit this code, click save, and you're good to go. Um, so the UI is uh, very convenient, very nice to look at, um, but this is for developers and you always have access to the code. Uh, this chat input is going to take, uh, is usually, it represents like the search box, right, that for the smarter Netflix. Uh, whatever the user types into the search box, we're gonna run it through uh, the OpenAI embedding model, right? And here, uh, it's pre-faulted pre to three small, I have to change that to three large, because whatever, Embedding model you're using when you're ingesting, you have to use the same one when you do vector search. So, you know, no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and configure it with my OpenAI API key. Langflow has the ability to store global variables, so it's just really fast and easy uh, to store those and use them as you're building your apps. Uh, here is the vector search uh, component. I'm gonna go ahead and change the collection name to movies. Uh, I'm going to configure my application token, my API endpoint, uh, I'm going to customize, there are advanced options, uh, and I'm going to, instead of returning just four documents, I'm gonna return 10. I want 10 documents to come back, and great. And that's gonna, that's gonna go do the vector search. I'll show you what that looks like in one minute. All of those results are gonna come back to this parse data component. It's just taking this list of 10 things and smashing them into one big text string. Uh, and here, uh, this is where uh, we start constructing the prompt that we're gonna send to the LLM. Uh, for the most part, this is fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and edit it just a little bit. Uh, given the context above, uh, let's see, return a list of movie titles in markdown, uh, markdown format uh, that match this query. And let me go ahead and do this. Uh, okay, so now we've done some prompt engineering, right? Uh, finally, we're gonna send the prompt to uh, OpenAI. I'm actually gonna go ahead and just use the 3.5 Turbo. I'm cheap, 
Uh, and frankly, RAG is so great that you don't need to use the smartest LLM. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and configure my API key. Uh, and we are done. And now we're gonna send uh, what comes back from the LLM to the chat output. So Langflow has a built-in playground um, because once again, this is like an IDE. We wanna make it super easy for you to test your AI flows. And as you kind of heard up here in some of the questions from the audience, like, oh, you know, like how do I test the performance? How do I see that it's working? Like this is a really great environment to do um, iterative uh, AI application building. So let's go ahead and repeat what we did before, right? Uh, strong female lead. And it's gonna think and it's gonna come back with a list of uh, movies that match this query based on vector search. So there we go. Uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Kate, Red Sparrow. Uh, this is exactly what I was expecting, exactly what I wanted, awesome. So imagine that you're happy. You're like, this is perfect. I've, I've, I've fiddled with the temperature. I've fiddled with the model. Like, this is exactly what I want. The problem is, this is my IDE. How do you turn this into software that people can use? So with Langflow, you have tons of options for getting this out of Langflow and into your software. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to rely on Langflow's ability to operate simultaneously as an API server. So let's go ahead and copy, so this is running on my laptop. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL and I'm going to switch over to my full stack JavaScript Next.js application. Uh, and let's see, let me make it bigger, great. And I'm going to paste that Langflow URL in here. I'm gonna save it, and I'm going to run it. Uh, awesome. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Next.js is a full stack JavaScript framework. Um, Langflow is entirely Python, but because I'm running it as a web, as an API server, you can build these applications using any language, any stack that you like. Uh, and let's go ahead and spawn my app. All right, awesome. So now we've gone from that Langflow UI to something quite beautiful. Um, we've called this Movies++. Plus Plus. Uh, and let's go ahead and rerun this query, right? Strong female lead. So we're asking Langflow, we're making the API call, and if everything goes according to plan, awesome. It comes back with exactly that same information. Yes, yeah, this is a round of applause. All right, so, uh, but look. Uh, it's, 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 it's easy to debug things when you're in your IDE. What happens when you ship this to production and like maybe it's not behaving right or you get, you get a report from your users like, hey, I'm getting really weird results. Well, as uh, Harrison helpfully mentioned, there's something, this awesome tool called Langsmith. And uh, you can use Langsmith with Langflow as easily as setting a single API key environment variable. And as you can see right here, what time? 6.14, right, like one minute ago, uh, all of that interaction to the LLM, I can make this bigger too, because it's awesome, all of that interaction was sent to Langsmith for our observability needs, right? I can click into all of this. I can see the chat input was a uh, strong female lead, all the way to the chat output was this list of movies, right? So with a, and, it's, and as a developer, I didn't have to do anything. I set an API key in my environment variable. Of course, I created a Langsmith account. It all just worked. It's totally amazing. Uh, so, now one thing I wanted to mention though, uh, one thing you might be saying is like, look man, cool toy, but like you showed us Netflix and you gave us a chatbot, right? Uh, and I know, you know, Harrison specifically mentioned one thing that he's really interested about is what kind of user interactions do we really want to build for people, right? Um, and uh, one of the things uh, that is uh, possible now increasingly possible uh, using more and more tools that are coming out is something called generative UI. And I wanna show you uh, what generative UI can look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, show me these as UI. And boom, boom. This is, this, is, this is not just like some static stuff. This is a fully interactive, hoverable UI. You can click on any one of these things uh, you have the full power of the web platform or whatever mobile platform you're on to build these things, right? Um, and uh, in, this, in this case, it's powered by the Vercel uh, AI SDK, um, but once again, more and more tools are coming out that are making this kind of programming possible. Um, and honestly, uh, once you see something like this, you can never ever unsee it. Uh, and it, your mind just starts to go to like, what else could I do? Like, could I say something like, show me the trailer for 
Wonder Woman? I don't know. Let's see. Holy crap. What about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Oh, I wish the audio was louder, but that's okay. Right. The gods made the Amazons to restore peace to the world. And it's what I'm going. Awesome. So, uh, all right. So, uh, I hope that that makes all of you, <laughs> yeah, good movie, right? I, no, sincerely, right? Like, look, you can poke holes and all that stuff, right? Um, you know, me and some of the members of the DataStax DevRel team put this app together, like, pretty fast, right? Everything I showed you is, like, no more than, like, uh, 200 complete lines of code. So imagine what's possible when you're building real applications, uh, you know, in, in sort of like with, with real resources, right? Like if I, if I can build this in 200 lines of code, imagine what you can do in 2000. Thank you very much. Woo!